Welcome. Today, we'll be showing a demonstration of a prototype system for controlling video screens just like this one. As you can see, the screen is empty right now, and it's waiting for us to give it something to do. We'll be connecting our screen to a small device known as a Raspberry Pi, which is a miniature computer with a range of ports such as Ethernet and USB. It also has an HDMI port, which comes in handy for our need to control video displays. The Raspberry Pi runs Linux, which, of course, offers a full range of development frameworks for use in making customized software. Our system takes the form of a Node.js application, which is a server-side JavaScript environment that has been catching on lately, and is well-suited for our software. The Raspberry Pi is small, about the size of a credit card, and inexpensive. We have the Raspberry Pi connected to our monitor, and have now opened our media control interface, which is an app we have running on an Android tablet. It's designed to allow browsing through video titles available from a media server. Here, we see that I have a set of test clips that are mostly Let's Plays of various video games. If I select a clip, I'm able to browse through its timeline and view thumbnail images from any point. Here, we are looking at one clip called Lotus Drifting, which is from a game that I haven't tried, but which looks fun, I suppose. I can choose a thumbnail image from the clip's timeline and tap it to bring up a screen with more controls, including buttons labeled Stop, Frame, and Play. These buttons can be used to send commands to our Raspberry Pi. There is also a checkbox marked Screen 1, which allows selection of the target device for each command. At the moment, we have only one Raspberry Pi screen on our system, but if there were multiple screens present on our network, they would show up here. We'll see what that looks like later on. We'll begin by trying the frame function. If I press that button on the tablet, we see that our screen comes alive with the thumbnail image we selected. The Raspberry Pi affixes a small text label to the image, showing its time position in the clip. Once we're done viewing the frame, we can press the play button on the app to begin video playback from that point. With our tablet app and Raspberry Pi working together, it's easy to browse through our video collection and watch arbitrary sections from any clip in any sequence we desire. Playing video on one screen at a time is great, but for even more fun, we can use multiple screens. In this case, I've configured a bank of seven monitors with Raspberry Pi devices running our software. With more screens present, our tablet app now shows screens one through seven on its command interface. I've selected all of them so that our commands hit every available Raspberry Pi device. When we press the play button, all of our screens receive the command and begin playback of the selected clip. Unfortunately, at the moment there isn't any mechanism for time syncing among the devices, so each one plays whenever it can, and we end up with the videos all in slightly different positions. Of course, we could improve on that situation in a later version of the playback system. Manual commands are nice, but it's also possible to set up an automated process that executes commands outside of the Android app. Here, I have the system configured for continuous playback of all clips from our bank of videos using randomly selected 7 to 15 second intervals. Since I don't like having screens be empty during those times when I'm not directly controlling their content, this setup is the default one I use in my office, so that there's always something interesting to look at. The 7 to 15 second interval is shorter than the one I usually configure, 
but is, of course, very useful for demonstration purposes here. Our system can be used for more than just video clips. As we saw, the Raspberry Pi devices are also able to display thumbnail images with a text label. They do this using a generalized framework that can be used to draw arbitrary images to the screen, with imagination as the only limit. To demonstrate the various possibilities, I can show Star Commander, a membrane software video game for the PC. This game contains a number of interface animations and visual effects, which we see here being controlled by a player using a mouse cursor. The game uses the same display framework as our Raspberry Pi system. Therefore, with some work, it would be possible to make the Raspberry Pi show similar interface elements in response to commands it receives.